He returned to power on June 5, 2019, as the head of a civilian government. It came about following a highly disputed March 24 election, which brought an end to five years of military rule. They have succeeded in transforming junta-controlled government into a political party in a democratic system. But how has Thailand fared under this new quasi-civilian government one year on? Their position is secure, but ungovernable. And with the COVID-19 outbreak taking its toll on a country's economy, will it trigger a crisis of confidence in the new government? Will Prime Minister Prayut chan o -cha survive the biggest test to his leadership? March 2019, a watershed moment in Thai political history. That was when Thailand held its first general elections and ended five years of military rule. The polls were greeted with heightened public expectation about the possibility of a dramatic shift from a military-dominated government to civilian rule in Thailand. As it turned out, the Democratic Opposition Forces won the most number of seats in the lower house of parliament. The main opposition party, Pue Thai Party and its coalition partners, secured a total of 245 of the 500 parliamentary seats. It, however, fell short of the majority. And that paved the way for the military-linked party, the Palang Pracharat Party, to form the new government. It was backed by 250 unelected Upper House Members of Parliament appointed by the military as well as a few other smaller parties. And that had allowed General Prayut chan o -cha to be reinstalled as the country's Prime Minister on June 5, 2019. The Prime Minister of Thailand, who is the most important part of the Thai government, has to say that, in fact, the Prime Minister of Thailand so it's not the transition that uh, happened naturally or the transition that happened under democratic uh, uh, framework. Right? It's, a, it's the framework that was uh, made by the junta and all the network of the junta. So the, the transition was in favor of the junta. I think they kind of succeed in moving themselves from the old regime to the new regime, right? At least they can stay in power. They have succeeded in transforming uh, junta-controlled government into a political party in a democratic system. So it's a kind of a very interesting mixture between bureaucrats, technocrats, uh, military, and politicians, you know, joining into a party. And they have succeeded in transforming that into a political party in the parliament. I think that's the only thing that they have fared uh, quite uh, smoothly uh, after being in power for nearly five years. The military-aligned government entered the March 2019 election campaign with a bold promise to deliver GDP growth of around 6% annually. It's well above the 2 to 4% gross domestic product rate that Thailand had been accustomed to since the military took power in 2014. However, achieving the growth target during its first year in office has proven to be very challenging. Growth in the last quarter of 2019 slumped to a five-year low due largely to the ongoing trade war between China and the US. I think last year, we were beset by quite a few problems. I think the, the uh, trade war between the US and China and uncertainty regarding uh, global trade policies were having an impact on, on global trade in general. And Thailand was, you know, we are a major exporting country and we 
have obviously suffered along with the rest of the, the, rest of the world. So, um, and that's why we saw quite a huge drop in uh, our merchandise export in 2019. The Thai baht didn't help either. The Thai baht was one of the strongest currency in Asia last year, and that, that uh, way on our exports and tourism to some extent. That impact was felt across many sectors of the economy, including tourism. Luk Chang Tour is a small tour agency that caters to mostly domestic tourists. Its owner, Charuat Naranong, feels that the government has not done enough to help the tourism industry to grow, even though it forms one of the key components of the Thai economy. It's not a lot of time to pay attention to the government's attention. It makes me not see that the government has not done enough to help the tourism industry to grow, even though it forms one of the key components of the Thai economy. It makes me not see that the government has not done enough to help the tourism industry to grow, even though it forms one of the key components สิ่งที่เขาพยายามทำเนี่ยมันเกิดประโยชน์จริงๆหรือเปล่ากับทางผู้ผมเพราะว่าผู้ผมลงไปลุยกันเองมากกว่านะครับแล้วก็มันดีไหมมันดีไหมแต่ในแง่ธุรกิจเนี่ยผมมองแบบเป็นกลางๆเนื้อตัดตัดความรู้สึกออกไปเนี่ยแล้วถ้าเกิดเรามองไปที่ในแง่ของ GDP แล้วเนี่ยมันไม่ได้เป็นไปแบบที่ภาคธุรกิจทั้งประเทศต้องการนะนะครับซึ่งคิดว่าคนทําธุรกิจเนี่ยถ้าเกิดมองจุดเนี้ยก็คิดว่าเขาจะเข้าใจว่ารัฐบาลชุดนี้ให้ผลดีกับทางแง่ธุรกิจได้แค่ไหนมากกว่าครับเพราะนั้นแล้วเนี่ยซึ่งเราก็ไม่เราไม่เห็นความชัดเจนตรงนั้นสิ่งที่เราทําได้คือทางพวกเราเองนี่แหละ,ะทางหน่วยงานด้านการท่องเที่ยวเองเจ้าของธุรกิจการท่องเที่ยวเองก็ช่วยเหลือสนับสนุนกันเองมากกว่าที่เราจะแบบทําให้แบบธุรกิจท่องเที่ยวในกลุ่มของพวกเราเนี่ยไปไปข้างหน้าได้ครับ Pai Bun Nityawan, deputy leader of the governing Palang Pracharat Party, however, feels that the government has done well under the circumstances. At least, he says, the country is now more peaceful compared to the period before the military takeover. But what is important is to look at the government that has come to the country has more than enough to go to the country. ก็ต้องดูรัฐบาลก่อนหน้านั้นก็คือตั้งแต่รัฐบาลปี2551จนถึงปี2557ที่มาจากการเลือกตั้งเหมือนกันนะฮะก็จะเห็นว่ารัฐบาลในปี2551ในสมัยของคุณสมัครสุทธรเวศเป็นนายกรัฐมนตรีเป็นรัฐบาลที่มีพรรคพลังประชาชนเป็นหลักก็มีปัญหาตั้งแต่วันแรกมีความวุ่นวายมีการชุมนุมมีม็อบเรื่องที่ไม่ต้องการให้แก้ไขรัฐธรรมนูญแล้วก็รวมทั้งประเด็นสําคัญที่เป็นจุดแข็งของพลเอกประยุทธ์จันโอชานั้นก็คือการรักษาความมั่นคงความสงบความเรียบร้อยนั้นก็เรียกว่าใช้กระบวนการของกฎหมายมาบังคับใช้ได้เรียกว่าเป็นที่น่าพอใจซึ่งอยู่ช่วงที่ผ่านมามีปัญหาทางเศรษฐกิจเกี่ยวกับสงครามการค้าระหว่างสหรัฐกับจีนนะฮะก็กระทบกันไปหมดทั้งทุกประเทศแต่ว่าประเทศไทยถือว่าสามารถบริหารความาเรียกว่าปัญหาในยามที่พบปัญหาได้เรียกว่าอยู่ในเกณฑ์ดีนะฮะประเทศก็เศรษฐกิจก็เติบโตไปได้พอประมาณ But living up to the democratic ideals has been a big challenge for this government. Although the general election in March has given the country the appearance of democracy, it has made little headway in restoring full democracy since then. The military remains a dominant force in Thai politics, and that's not expected to go away in the foreseeable future. The general perception among the Thai public is that Thailand remains an authoritarian country that functions under the guise of democracy. Still, some analysts feel that some political space does exist since the March 2019 election compared to the period when the country came under direct military control. They have become more liberal. Uh, they, they can't use that absolute power that they had, but there are some elements of it, it's still there. Like with the COVID now, 
uh, actually we are not supposed to criticize uh, the government's policy. If you go strictly according to their rules, you know, we could be in trouble, but anyhow, we still do it, and we can do it because it's a democratic system. So even though the laws have become more liberal, but at the same time, the structure that they have created during the junta year still remains. And they can always, you know, revert to that very easily without creating a coup or without, you know, holding a coup. We have to accept that uh, the degree of freedom is relatively better. However, what we are facing now in this country is more like the complexity of the issue. Look at the case of internet freedom. The Ministry of Digital uh, Economy, right? That was originated uh, around 10 years ago. Originally, it was filed to promote new development of economy by uh, using digital technology to promote new economy. Right now, the big task of the Ministry of Digital Economy is to set up the center of fake news. Right? Not only that they're trying to suppress so many news that's not in line with the government, sometimes they even produce their own fake news. But that hasn't stopped the opposition forces from exercising their political rights and freedom in Parliament under the semi-democratic system. For example, in February this year, the opposition parties began a parliamentary censure debate against Prime Minister Prayut chan -cha and five of his cabinet ministers. That came after the Constitutional Court dissolved a key party in the opposition bloc, the Future Forward Party, led by auto tycoon Panaton Drunkrun Krankit. Although the censure motion failed to achieve its desired objective, the public debate was seen as the fiercest criticism ever of Prayut's leadership. ท่านบาลก็ถูกฝ่ายค้านยื่นอภิปรายไม่ไว้วางใจนายกรัฐมนตรีและรัฐมนตรีอีก 5 ของรัฐบาลของพลเอกประยุทธ์ได้อย่างชัดแจ้งในการอภิปรายของฝ่ายค้านก็จึงล้มเหลวไม่ได้ประสบความสําเร็จใดๆแต่กลับประสบปัญ
Apart from disbanding the party, the court also banned 16 executives of the party from politics for 10 years, including its founder Tanaton, ending his career as a maverick politician. I think the ruling is clear that the establishment doesn't allow progressive, liberal political parties to exist in this country. You know, it's a sad thing because um, I think we need, I mean Thailand as a whole, we need a political party that stand firmly on liberal values, democratic values, human rights values. Um, but um, the, the, the military government and the establishment, they, they, are, they are terrified by the ex existence of our party, particularly when our party got the support of 6.3 million people over, over the past election in March 2019. When they see the result, I think they've been terrified by this and particularly those who have those who supported us they are millennials they are uh, people of the younger generation so uh, it's clear that the the existence of our party is threatening their being we have used this as a political tool time and time again you know to get rid of you know group of politicians that you don't like you know, and, and I think this is very unfair and it would not help the democracy to develop in the near future. If the problem is in relation to Kuntanathan, then Kuntanathan has to be responsible for it, but not the whole party, not to the 8 million people who have voted for um, you know, Future Forward Party, that their voice could disappear just by a couple of judges who, if you read their you know, uh, verdict, you will see that they don't really have a very strong you know, um, evidence against uh, the party or Kuntanathan, but they could use and twist, you know, these laws and create laws by themselves in dissolving a party. Mr. Paibun, however, feels that the case involving the Future Forward Party is pretty straightforward. It has breached the law and it will now have to face the music. <laughs> ก็เป็นเรื่องที่ก็ไม่มีใครว่าอะไรก็ดําเนินการไปแต่ส่วนที่มีปัญหานั้นมันไม่ได้เกิดจากไปได้รับความนิยมมากจนกระทั่งเลยถูกเล่นงานมันเป็นการพูดแบบไม่ได้ยึดตรรกะไม่อยู่ในเหตุโดยผล We cannot say that well the future forward party is absolutely uh, clean because of many technicality but the big issue is future forward party is the most popular party among the new generation it's significant because the new generation feel like they are losing their voice. Right? I'm not saying that it's right or wrong, but the point is once you dissolve the party that represents the future, that represents the hope of the new generation, right? you cannot communicate with the new generation. That sentiment is also shared by 21-year-old Sirin Mung Charan. A third-year student at the Chilalongkong University, she feels that by banning the country's third-largest party, it has also taken away something very precious which the society holds dear. I spent so many years under the military dictatorship and I began to see that, it, that Thai politics it, uh, involved my life, what it involved in it, it, it uh, affects everyone and that that's why I I realized that if I want to do something with human rights with feminism then I, my voice need to be listened we all know that the government cannot let the future forward party continue and but the court's decision to dissolve the party still made a lot of people angry because it, it was so 
obviously something that is not fair, that is not justice. The party uh, represents hope for, for uh, so many people, not only young people, but so many people who, whose voice were, was forgotten under the military government. I think the people see that. People see the injustice um, of the system and the, you know, the anger is real. You can see the demonstrations of the students in various universities across the country. And I think this is the first time that the demonstrations for, you know, the fight for democracy not happening just in Bangkok. The protest, the demonstrations occurred all across the country, from the north to the south, from the east to the west. And I think this is a new phenomenon. But all is not lost for now. After the dissolution of the Future Forward Party, the remaining party members have gone on to form a new party called the Move Forward Party. It's smaller in terms of the number of MPs that it has, but it's still grounded in the same liberal principles of the Future Forward Party. It hopes to continue the mission of the now defunct Future Forward Party. Some people come with their desire to change uh, our, our inequality, poverty reduction, gender equality, uh, human rights, uh, various things, land, land justice, environmental politics. In a country to function, you require diversity of voices, and we're one of them. Uh, and we're speaking for uh, people, hopefully, the 99% that we represent, and it's 6.3% people that vote or the remaining other people who didn't vote for us, but are still suffering. But a curse for one party is a boon for another. After the dissolution of the Future Forward Party, nine MPs crossed over to the Pumjatai Party, a component party in the ruling party coalition. This brought the number of MPs that the Boom Chatai has to 61, making it the third largest party after the Pui Thai Party and the ruling PPRP. With the new additions, it has now strengthened the government's grip and power even further. The opposition's voices and influence have been reduced, making it easier for the government to pass key legislations in Parliament. ส่งผลค่ะเพราะส่งผลต่อการที่เราจะใช้เสียงในสภาในการกำกับควบคุมเราชิ้งถึงต้องมาพยายามคุยกับประชาชนให้ประชาชนได้ทราบว่ามันเกิดเหตุอะไรบ้างเกิดสิ่งที่ไม่ชอบมาพากลใดๆบ้างเพราะโหวตในสภาเราคงเสียงคงแพ้เพราะเขาปล้นไป 4-5 รอบนี้นะคะจากเสียงที่ฝ่ายค้านมากกว่าป้นไปรอบหนึ่งรอบสองเสียงใกล้เคียงกันเสียงยังไม่พออีกก็ป้นไปรอบสามรอบสี่นะคะ So the ruling government, I think, all together they've got more than 11 or 12 MPs from Future Forward Party to join with them. So they made them much more powerful. It made the coalition much larger. So for them, this is like something that they uh, would benefit, you know, from very clearly. While the battle for democracy continues. The government has now found itself caught in the middle of another huge crisis, one that could potentially bring the nation's economy to its knees. COVID-19. How will Thailand handle the deadly pandemic? Is the country able to cope with its devastating impact? It has infected more than 2.4 million people and caused over 170,000 deaths around the world. No country has been spared, and the impact has been devastating, especially for countries which are ill-prepared to deal with the rapid spread of the virus. In Thailand, there are now over 2,600 confirmed cases of COVID-19 with more than 41 deaths so far. Here at Thammasat University in Bangkok, school dormitories have been converted into a field hospital. The facility has been constructed specifically to deal with the growing number of COVID-19 cases. 
ก็จริงๆเรื่องที่เร่งด่วนตอนนี้คือผมคิดว่ามันเป็นเรื่องของการบริหารจัดการทรัพยากรทางด้านสาธารณสุขนะครับจริงๆถามว่าประเทศไทยมีความพร้อมมากขนาดไหนกับการรับโรคนี้เนี่ยถ้าเราพูดถึงเรื่องจํานวนบุคลากรเราพูดถึงเตียงพูดถึงอุปกรณ์เนี่ยจริงๆแล้วมีความพร้อมมากระดับหนึ่งแต่ปัญหาก็คือว่าในระบบสาธารณสุขปัจจุบันเราออกแบบไว้รองรับผู้ป่วยโดยทั่วไปที่เป็นโรคอื่นๆไม่ใช่โรคนี้งั้นสิ่งที่เกิดขึ้นคือพอเราไม่มีการจัดสรรทรัพยากรที่ดีเนี่ยครับมันก็อาจจะส่งผลทําให้เราแม้มันจะมีทรัพยากรมีบุคลากรก็จริงแต่ว่าไม่สามารถที่จะหาทรัพยากรหรือแม้แต่จะหาสถานที่เพื่อที่จะมารองรับหรือจัดการเกี่ยวกับโรคโควิดได้เราก็จะเกิดสภาพที่คนไข้เนี่ยไม่สามารถที่จะเข้ามาสู่โรงพยาบาลได้เกิดความแออัดในโรงพยาบาลเหล่านี้เป็นต้นครับผม Fortunately for Thailand the number of infections remains relatively low compared with many other countries in the region but Dr. Chachai says the hospital will be put under immense pressure should the number of infected cases increase exponentially in the next coming days or weeks ก็จริงๆโดยยอดตอนนี้ยังยังอยู่ในในระดับที่เรายังคิดว่ายังรับมือได้นะครับระดับร้อยกว่ากว่าเนี่ยครับหลังจากที่เรียนครับว่ายังยังเราคิดว่ายังรับมือได้แต่ว่าสิ่งที่เรากําลังดูคือคือยอดเคสใหม่เนี่ยครับที่ในช่วง2สัปดาห์ก็คือช่วงประมาณสงการนี่แหละจะเป็นช่วงที่เราจะจะพอเห็นภาพแล้วล่ะว่าเคสใหม่ที่เกิดขึ้นเนี่ยน่าจะประมาณสักเท่าไหร่ถ้ามันเกิน200ขึ้นไปหรือขึ้นไป300เนี่ยอันนี้มันหมายถึงว่าการที่เกิดการย้ายท้องมีการกลับท้องถิ่นในช่วงนั้นเนี่ยน่าจะส่งผลซึ่งการส่งผลในตอนนั้นเนี่ยมันจะไม่ใช่แค่สนามมวยที่เดียวแล้วครับแต่เราจะหมายถึงทุกจังหวัดที่จะมีการแพร่กระจายได้พร้อมๆกันในหลายๆจังหวัดดังนั้นถ้าตัวเลขมันขึ้นเกิน2อ0สานี่เรากำลังพูดถึงการกระจายทั้งประเทศเพราะฉะนั้นก็จะเป็นเรื่องที่เราคงจะต้องมีมาตรการเร่งด่วนอะไรบางอย่างที่จะออกมาดําเนินการแล้วก็จัดการในเรื่องพวกนี้ครับ Despite having among the lowest number of infections in the region, the government's late response to the outbreak has put itself in a tough spot. Thailand was the first country outside China to report a COVID-19 case, but it's among the last to react. Other territories in the region, such as South Korea, Taiwan, and Singapore, had reacted swiftly since the early state of the outbreak. Imposing travel restrictions and conducting contact tracing to help stem a wider spread of the disease, but different state agencies and ministries in Thailand were still squabbling over what to do next. The Ministry of Health took lead in the early stages in dealing with the problem, but the problem of just dealing with the spread was one thing. But there are some other things that needed to be dealt as well. I such as are you going to stop people coming from China? Are you going to stop visa on arrival? You know, are we are you going to allow Thai people to come back or not? What will be the screening system? If you have people who are infected with coronavirus, how are you going to manage them? Where are you going to keep them? Where are you going to quarantine them? This is something that the Ministry of Health can't do by themselves. So they have to get support from other, uh, um, I would say, ministries, and that is the problem. When the outbreak began, right, uh, under the situation of Thailand, depend on tourism, right, we were not surprised that the virus came, right, and the Thai government so reluctant to close down the country. Right? There were well, many proposal by Ministry of Health, right, to uh, to cancel visa on arrival. We couldn't do it, right? So it doesn't mean that the government stupid, right? The government were very reluctant. So at that one is the economic side, right? We could not close down the country because we were very uh, uncertain that if we close down the country, we won't have any money left from uh, uh, tourism. The government itself has acknowledged that it took the authorities quite some time after the outbreak in Wuhan to impose travel restrictions and stop flights to and from the Hubei capital. ส่วนประเทศไทยจากอันดับ2ก็สามารถควบคุมจำนวนผู้ติดเชื้อไปอยู่ในอันดับ30กว่านะฮะซึ่งถือว่าการควบคุมนั้นได้ดีและสิ่งที่สำคัญที่จะต้องเปรียบเทียบอีกก็คือจำนวนผู้ติดเชื้อต่อประชากร1ล้านคนนะฮะประเทศไทยเนี่ยอยู่ในกลุ่มต่ำมาก
Still, the delayed response and the lack of unity among several government agencies and ministries has led to an erosion of public confidence in the government. A poll conducted by the Swan Dusit Rajapat University in April this year showed that the majority of those polled were not confident in the government's ability to stem the spread of COVID-19. ครับผมว่ารัฐบาลเนี่ยต้องพยายามมากกว่าเดิมมากๆแล้วก็ทํากันบ้านให้เยอะครับซึ่งยากมากตอนนี้จะเรียกความมั่นใจจากประชาชน
uh, people from getting laid off in the first place. I think that would be the key policy. I really want to see more support um, to the poor. What Corona virus exposes is the weakness of our safety net. You could see clearly that people who bear the cost of the social distancing mostly are the poor people. These poor people, they earn their wage on a daily basis. And if you stop economic activity by the end of the month, they don't have um, enough income to pay for their rent. They don't have enough income to pay for their kids' schooling. And these people are the most fragile, and there's not enough government support on this. That would include the street food vendors. Nuntawat is one of them. He sells fishbowl noodles in Soy Ari, home to a huge range of street food. The 73-year-old started working for his father when he was 12 and eventually inherited the store. His earnings helped to support his 10 brothers and sisters. However, the pandemic has ruined everything he has built for so many years. พอหลังจากที่มีโรคนี้มาแล้วน่ะเปลี่ยนไปหมดเลยตั้งตัวไม่ติดเลยนะมันจะช่วยได้ตลอดเหรอไม่จะช่วยให้ทั่วถึงเหรอมันก็เป็นไปไม่ได้อีกใช่มั้ยมันก็ลำบากใจนะ In a move to ease their suffering, the government recently announced that it would give out about 150 US dollars cash to these informal workers for a period of 3 months. This is part of the stimulus measures approved by the cabinet to help mitigate the impact of the COVID-19 outbreak. But now it has said that the existing funds could cover payments for only one month. The question is, will it be able to address the concerns of the people and resolve their financial hardship? ก็สําหรับประชาชนกลุ่มที่เค้าเรียกว่ากลุ่มที่มีรายได้น้อยอยู่แล้วหรือเป็นกลุ่มที่จะต้องมีพึ่งพิงรายได้จากการวิชาช
ต่แต่ไอ้ไอเรื่องทำหากินแล้วก็ทําไปแต่ว่าทําให้มันเล็กลงดีกว่าไม่ทําเลยแล้วก็อาศัยแต่รัฐบาลมันก็ไม่ไหว Will Prime Minister Prayut's government emerge stronger from the crisis? Will he be able to overcome what is seen as the greatest test to his leadership? Darkness has descended over Thailand. The once noisy and busy highways of Bangkok is now eerily quiet. The COVID-19 pandemic has slowed the economy to a crawl, and it's not certain yet if and when it can recover from the impact of the viral outbreak anytime soon. All the economic indicators so far seem to point to a weak outlook for the kingdom. I think our forecast is. Very uncertain now because um, we don't know when the collapse of the economic activity is going to be the worst. Uh, in our opinion, I think the second quarter will be the worst, and then we're going to see a, a recovery um, in Q3 and Q4. But this is, of course, uh, a speculation. I think parts of the economy that could recover quite quickly, um, you know, if these lockdown measures are lifted, would be travel, tourism, hospitality, retail. So this could come back really quickly. But then, like I said, at the end of the day, we'll we we'll have to see which companies are uh, have gone bankrupt for good. So how do we how do we ensure that we don't have a widespread bankruptcy after the crisis is over? And this is a big question: whether this government uh, can do whatever it takes to prevent you know widespread job losses. When you shut down the economy, you shut down the everyday life, right? It's not just inconvenient. They have nothing to eat. They don't have enough uh, security in their life. When you said you should stay home, what is the standard of home? For a lot of people, right? Staying at home meaning we have to travel back to our hometown, right? Far away from the city, and you probably uh, might brought back with you the COVID-19. Right back to your parents, which is very old, right? Ah, uh, well, I have to stay at home, but my my room is so small, right? And I live five people in my room. I live four people in my room, right? And how can everybody save from that? Right. So it's it's not easy. I know it's not easy. I'm not blaming the government, right? But the government should be more sensible to the people. Prime Minister Prayut has so far relied on his ability to maintain stability as well as law and order in the country after years of political turmoil. His position and reputation would be further strengthened if he is able to control the public health crisis well and keep the virus at bay. Or he could suffer a substantial damage to his political standing if the infections grow and the economic toll mounts. Will he emerge stronger or weaker after the crisis? The government says the prime minister has done well under the circumstances. ต่อประชากรหนึ่งล้านคนนะครับประเทศไทยเนี่ยอยู่ในกลุ่มต่ำมากในไทยมีประชากรทั้งสิ้น69ล้านคนมีผู้ติดเชื้อหลัก 2,000 กว่าซึ่งถือว่าน้อยมากเมื่อเปรียบเทียบแล้วนะฮะเปรียบเทียบกับประเทศอิตาลีซึ่งติดเชื้อกันทีนึงตั้งร่วมเกือบแสนแปดหมื่นกว่าเก้าหมื่นว่าจะช่วยเหลือเยียวยาให้กับประชาชนที่ได้รับเดือดร้อนผลกระทบจากโควิด19นั้นให้มีความทุกข์น้อยที่สุดให้เขาได้พบกับเรียกว่าปัญหาน้อยที่สุดได้อย่างไรนะนี่คือความท้าทายคือในความเสียหายก็ต้องเสียหายให้น้อยที่สุดเราต้องยอมรับมันเกิดความเสียหายแต่เสียหายน้อยที่สุดแล้วก็ฟื้นฟูขวัญและกําลังใจให้กับประชาชนที่เขาอาจจะได้รับผลกระทบแต่ละระดับนะฮะให้เขาเรียกว่าสามารถเยียวยาได้สามารถยืนหยัดต่อไปได้แล้วก็เดินหน้าต่อไปแล้วรอเวลาที่จะ But for some people in Thailand the issue is not just the government's ability in handling the COVID crisis or nursing the economy back to health it's about restoring full democracy And bringing legitimacy back to the state. 
there have been certain group of middle class who have been very unhappy with the government's performance. Um, now you have people who are affected by the economic downturn, uh, been affected by COVID, would also go against the government as well. So this would be a big pressure, you know, uh, for the government to deal with. I think they will come back much weaker and it's very possible that we might see another election next year. The government will face the issue of legitimacy for sure. The background of the prime minister who actually came to power through coup d'etat, claiming that he is the best, he has been the best one for all the crisis. Right? This legitimacy is gone. Now, what he has been doing and what he is about to do will be the big evidence to show that whether he is capable of running the country. People will start to realize that he is running the country not because of his performance, but it's because of the unfairness of the structure that still keep him in place. Even the new generation of Thais, like Sirin Mong Charon, has been getting bolder in calling for greater democratic rights and equal treatment for all under the law. I hope to see Thailand as a place of equality and uh, a place where human rights are respected, which it is not like that right now. But I wish that we can achieve that in the future uh, because in order for everyone to matter, uh, for everyone to have a voice, uh, the government or the people in power have to respect human rights. <laughs> ก็จะต้องมีบางอย่างที่ถูกทักท้วงก็ผมเห็นพลเอกประยุทธ์ท่านก็รับฟังนะฮะถ้าเป็นเสียงทักท้วงที่มีเหตุมีผลท่านก็แก้ไขแล้วการแก้ไขนั้นก็ถือว่าเป็นเรื่องที่ยอมรับของสังคมนะฮะหลายๆเรื่องหลายๆเรื่องก็ต้องดําเนินการกันไปตามตัวบทกฎหมายแต่พลเอกประยุทธ์จะยึดในหลักของกฎหมายเป็นสําคัญนะฮะแล้วท่านก็มองว่าบ้านเมืองการที่จะบริหารและการแผ่นดินต่อไปนั้นกฎหมายเป็นเรื่องสําคัญที่สุดคนบุคคลต่างๆจะต้องอยู่ภายใต้กฎหมายบังคับกฎหมายกันอย่างทั่วถึงประเทศถึงค่อยเดินหน้าได้ After the military takeover in July 2014, General Prayut Chan-o-Cha had claimed political legitimacy through an election that almost guaranteed victory for the military-backed party. Halang Pracharat. One year on, it now has a daunting task of addressing a myriad of problems facing the nation. The economy is set to suffer its deepest contraction since the 1990s following the COVID-19 crisis. Tourist arrivals have plunged and exports have slumped. Poverty is also expected to increase as the economy slides further into the abyss. Will Prayut survive the major test to his leadership? It remains to be seen.